When I came to China, the big phrase was zili gongshan, self-reliance. Yes. Well, now China, and you listen to recent remarks of Xi Jinping, uh, that talk about interdependence, that China will do those things that it's best at doing and rely on the world system for some of the things it's not so good at doing. And conversely, we will rely on China for things it's doing better than we can do. And that our welfare of both our countries improves if we rely on the other or each of us to do what we do best. And the U.S. government uh, under George Herbert Walker Bush, I think wanted to have good relations with China, but politically that was difficult for him to accomplish for a while. And consequently, uh, the U.S. government and others looked to our committee to fill in the gap because we had less official relations, we needed more unofficial relations. So our committee became, I would say, the major conduit for high-level exchanges uh, probably until 1992-93. During that period in 1990, there was a, the most important group that visited was a group of uh, mayors from uh, about five Chinese, large Chinese cities. It was led by then mayor, Zhu Rongji. He, unlike many people, uh, he made a great effort to understand the psychology of Americans uh, so he could effectively communicate with them. Uh, before every meeting, he'd always ask me to explain, who am I talking to? What is their um, background? What are the issues they care about? And he almost never came into a meeting and read a speech. He actually listened to what people were asking and tried to answer them in a quiet, honest way. He also effectively used humor. Mm -hmm. I, always, I, I told him, if you can get Americans to laugh in the first 30 seconds, you'll have no problem with this audience. And he always did that. So I think the, uh, the biggest single thing in my era at the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations was maintaining stable relations uh, between our two countries when our governments themselves were having difficulty cooperating. I was fortunate, my, the way I tend to study China is by talking to Chinese, uh, by interviewing them, trying to understand China through the eyes of, of its own people. I, of course, use documents, uh, documentary research. I pay attention to what the 19th Party Congress says. But I feel I get the most insight by talking to Chinese people and trying to understand how they, under, they conceive of their problems, uh, how they see their alternatives, how they perceive U.S. behavior. So I try to understand China from the inside out. Many people approach China, to the task of learning about China from the outside in. So. Uh, I would say that the Chinese people are my teacher. I would caution my American compatriots to realize that we have to make room for others in the world, including China. For China, uh, quite frankly, China has made such spectacular pros progress that I think China needs to be patient and China needs to not be overconfident. If we have Americans that are too conservative and resist China on the one hand, and we have impatient, assertive Chinese people on the other hand, that's going to be a problem. So if that, that the rising confident power and the uh, previously dominant defensive power, I think that can create problems. So I think there is such a thing as the Thucydides trap. But where I disagree with some people is that I don't think it inevitably means war. 
I think what it means is we have to rely more on creating interdependence, mm -hmm. ecological cooperation in the world of environment, uh, economic cooperation, intellect. So the more you have this Thucydides problem, the more it requires you to emphasize and strengthen interdependence. So I, I, I agree there is a Thucydides danger, but smart, well-meaning people can overcome this.